Hey basketball players, my name is Alan from Els Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can set effective screens for your teammates so that you can get them open for either open shots or yourself open for open shots as well. Okay, so first things first, we've got a basketball. We're not needing a basketball right now, we're setting screens. So what we're going to be talking about is how guys and girls set screens today. Okay, so first off, I got this question, or I've seen this question on Reddit, so if you want to be able to ask questions on Reddit or the comments below, go for it. I will try my best to answer them. But anyways, from there, effective screens. Guys will be setting screens like this. Girls will be setting screens like this. Now, when you're setting a screen, your feet need to be planted number one. If they are moving, and you're also trying to set a screen when moving, it's called a moving screen. For one, it's dangerous. It can, it can really injure the opponent. And number two, it's called a foul. The reason it's called a foul because obviously it can hurt the opponent. If you're moving your screen and he's trying to run by you and he bangs his head off your elbow or off your shoulder or he connects knee to knee with your knee, first off, now it's getting dangerous for you because you just went knee on knee, but it's also dangerous for him as well. So that's why it's called a moving screen foul. Don't be doing that. Stay planted. Some leagues will allow you to move your upper body, but again, to me, that's a moving screen. Even in, basically, in, in leagues that allow that, uh, I, even as a coach, will say, no, you're not doing it because it could injure the opponent. Something that I did a lot of when I was younger in elementary school was when I set screens, I would stick my knee out. Now that's, again, a moving screen. Your feet are not planted. You're not, you're basically moving out of your cylinder of your body space and you're trying to commit an injury. The reason why I used to do that, and I see a lot of players doing that, is because the point guard or the guy who's getting screened for is not getting close enough to you so that you can actually be an effective screen. So now it's a two-part thing where now the person you're screening for also has to actually use you and rub shoulders with you, or at least close to rubbing shoulders with you. If they're going three, four feet around you, you can't move over to try and set that screen even better. He needs to run his player into you. You are becoming a wall at that point in time and he needs to be able to use you. If he's going too far out, you need to talk to him as a player and your coach should be talking to him as well because his defender is just gonna be going around you like if you're not even there because technically you're not. Now you're probably asking, why do guys set screens like this and girls set screens like this? The reason is, is way back in the day for guys anyways, setting a screen like this was allowed and seen. You, you probably still see some guys doing screens like this. However, there's a lot of dirty players out there who like to, when they're trying to fight through a screen, kind of hit the player's area. That's why guys will go like this. Now, for girls, they screen like this because obviously that's a painful area if they get hit up there. So, that's why there's two different ways of setting a screen for guys and girls. However, this, the issue is the same. You're not moving and the player who you're screening for actually rubs shoulders with you so that now you can, well, become a wall. Okay, so now to set an effective screen and roll. What you're gonna be doing is coming up to the player you're screening for. You're gonna be getting nice and wide and straight. You're gonna be setting that screen. As soon as he goes around you, you're gonna pivot. Now, how I like to teach and do a screen and roll myself is to be able to hold on to that player I'm screening for, not necessarily hold on where you're stopping him from running around you, but know where he's going. Turn, because he's gonna be trying to fight over or under you most likely, and you're gonna be sealing him at that time. Now, your defender has to switch off on him. As a center myself, up until grade 10, I was a grade, a grade 10 center, at grade 11 I was no longer a center and I would go up, I would set a screen, I would make sure that he's not fighting over, if, if he does decide to start fighting over, I would just make that screen a bit higher so that he has to go under and as soon as he starts going under, I would seal him which now makes him have to switch because he's not getting around me. My guy who's bigger has to go and guard that guard. And now I've got a mismatch and I'm cutting towards the rim. So let me go over that one more time. You're setting that screen, you're sealing, you got your hand up asking for the ball. Now because you've got a mismatch, you should be able to get to the rim really easily. And also, if you decide, if let's say somebody drops off, 
you're no longer open you need to get the heck out of there because now you've got a mismatch on your guard and now your guard can now take your old defender the center to school because guards are theoretically and generally faster than centers so what have we got over so far first off when you set that screen you need to be solid you cannot be moving you need to then seal that player so that you have now a mismatch. Now there's one more thing that I need to talk to you about is off ball screening. To screen for players who are not currently having the ball. A lot of teams and a lot of players don't do that in this day. So let's say you right now are a guard and, or somebody who has the ball. And I'm currently down here as a, as a center for example in the low post asking for the ball. But I'm not getting the ball from you because this guy is a fantastic defender. So we want to try and get this guy out in the wing. Let's say we have a player out in the wing here and he's going to be wide open if he cuts to the rim because my center wants to stick to my butt. What we're going to do is set a back screen which means that I'm setting a screen towards the back of the defender so that my player can cut baseline, he can cut, do a high cut across the, uh, the free throw line one or the other. Generally a back, a back screen is going to have a back cut towards the, along the baseline and then that way, he would be able to use that screen, rub shoulders again, and hopefully be open for a layup. So screens are not necessarily just for players who have the ball. They're also for players who don't have a ball, who need to get open for a layup or a three-point shot, whatever it may be. You could also, as a center, this is something that I used to like to do, especially at the grade 12 time. Even though I was a guard in grade 12, I still got time down in the low post. I would show up. I wouldn't be asking for the ball. I would actually be having my hand up like this, which means do not pass it to me. I'm doing a fake. And then I would cut back down, set a screen for our low player. He would then cut up and he would be open for a three-point shot. Now that three-point shooter is a very good three-point shooter and is currently on Team Canada. So, yeah, he's fantastic. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you as a basketball player and maybe even as a basketball coach. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another Twice a Day basketball video.